Welcome back. I'm Curtis Smith. In the winter, there's a lot of things not going on in the garden. It's a good time to be learning. So we're going to visit with Bob Bell, forester with uh, PNM, and he's going to teach some of the basics about trees. So Bob, professor, <laughs> what can we learn about trees that's really important to us? Well, I think that I think that what we can learn is how do trees grow. Okay. I mean, most people look at trees and appreciate their beauty without really understanding how that tree got there and what that tree needs to survive. Now, mm -hmm. when you take a look at um, oh, a, a beautiful wood dining room table, you don't often think about the fact that that used to be a tree. Trees, wood, wood is the structural component of a tree, and the way a tree is built with that wood can be very different from tree to tree. Mm -hmm. And we can see that right here in what we've got here. We've got some really interesting examples here. Here you have a, a piece of uh, weathered juniper, and you can see the nice straight grain that we have in this, in this wood and this, what used to be a tree. Over here we have a limb off of a ponderosa pine, and, and in no way, shape, or form <laughs> is this typical, but just like two different people can, can look different from one another and grow different from one another, two different trees, even if they're the same species, can grow in kind of odd ways. And you can see the severely twisted grain of this particular tree. And you'll see this in the forest. Standing deadwood very often you'll see something like this. So you it's will, not uncommon, but it's not real common. It's not real common. And especially, you, you make mention of the dead trees. Once that bark sloughs off, I'm often amazed as I'm walking through the woods to see how that tree grew. Mm -hmm. um, here's a, a good cross section of another ponderosa pine. And you can see the, the rings and you can see an, an old scar, perhaps an old fire scar, or perhaps an old logging injury that happened decades ago. The tree recovered from that wound. The wound never, never heals. A wound mm. never heals. And that's something to remember when it comes to trees. It always stays right there. It always stays right the there. The tree grows around it. The tree does the best it can to grow mm. around it. And if it succeeds, the tree lives. And if it fails, the tree does not live. Okay. And we can also see things here about how a tree grows and what's important. We've got the bark, which is protection. Just underneath it, though, we've got the xylem and the phloem. The xylem, the phloem, and the ever-important cambium. Uh -huh. The bark is like the skin, how your skin protects you from disease and infection. The bark protects the living wood of the tree. The living wood of the tree is immediately underneath the bark. There is a, a layer of wood called the cambium. The cambium is growing inward, which produces xylem, which carries water and minerals from the ground up into the crown of the tree. The bark, the cambium, I'm sorry, is growing outward, which produces phloem. Phloem is carrying sugars and starches from the crown of the tree down into all the various parts of the tree, the limbs, the trunk, and the ever-important roots. And that, that is essentially the crown of the tree is the food factory of the tree. And since the roots are necessary to provide the basic resources for the top to be working, they're important to the tree. But the top is important for providing the food that sustains the roots. It's a, they're really connected, aren't they? It is a system. It is a system, and you cannot have one part functioning and the other part not functioning. Both parts need to be functioning. And as we care for our trees with our watering, with our pruning, we're affecting both parts of that system then. We certainly are. Tree, some trees have rather interesting characteristics. For example, well, right behind you, for example, here is a Schumard oak. It's a member of the red oak group. And oak is typically considered a, a very, well, not typically considered, it is a ring porous tree. And that's an important thing to know. That's an important thing to know because a ring porous tree literally has, has capillaries that go from an individual root all the way up to a branch to an individual leaf. If you cut a root on a ring porous tree, you run the risk of killing an entire limb or a small branch or a large branch, but you will affect a, a very specific part of that tree by cutting a specific root. And over here we've got a maple, which is a diffuse porous. That is absolutely correct. Over here we have a sugar maple, and I emphasize the word sugar because, as I said before, this is the food factory of the tree. It's producing mm -hmm. sugar. These are, the, these are the maples that are filling the hills of Vermont that they get maple syrup from. Mm -hmm. And this is a diffuse porous tree. If you cut one root on one side of this tree, it may have a, a slight effect on the entire tree, but it will not have an effect on one specific spot. It will not have an, uh, an effect on one leaf or one limb, mm -hmm. one large branch. And here in New Mexico, the maples aren't that common. We've got them in Fourth of July Canyon and a few other places, but the poplars 
are common? Poplars, uh, all members of the cottonwood family are, are very common. In the higher elevations, you're usually running into mountain cottonwood and aspens. In the lower elevations in the valley, you're running into river cottonwood. And they're diffuse. They are diffuse porous. That is absolutely correct. Whereas the oaks are the oaks, common. Oaks and elms, actually, are also a ring porous tree. Okay, and the oaks elm is very common here. Elm is a little too common here because the, the most common elm that we have is the Siberian elm, which mm -hmm. is really not the most desirable tree, although it, it can produce very nice individual specimens. Okay, well, Bob, that's good things to learn about our trees, and now is a good time of the year to be thinking about that. Thank you very much. You're quite welcome, Chris.